Hey guys, welcome back to the Passive Money Plan. Today's topic is you have to think like a millionaire before becoming one. So, Kirby, this is something you teach a lot, actually. And in the sense that, not in the sense that, oh, you have to wear a three-piece suit and you have to buy a Lamborghini and when you can't afford it and all this stuff. It's thinking like a millionaire in the sense of managing your money, controlling emotions, all different kinds of things accountability it's a it's a lot of personal traits that you need that millionaires have that help them reach to where they are but i know you can word this better than i can go ahead and start it off um i'll just give you i'll just give you an example uh i used to of course when i was young of course everybody even though they deny it i'll be the one to admit it when i was young i wanted to have a lot of money and I would listen to anybody and everybody, but I never questioned the information of where I was getting my information from. You know, you got the broke uncle telling you all oh, money run on everything. Everybody got a quick side hustle. Broke friends coming with uh, different ideas about business, but they don't even know how the systems work. And, uh, you know, you for the older people in the world, I uh, used to watch infomercials late at night when you're sitting there broke trying to figure it out. And then the right infomercial come on TV to tell you, hey, if you just do this, you can get rich quick. So I done tried all the get rich quick schemes and things of that nature. It took for me to realize I didn't know what the hell I was doing or getting the information. And um, in the world, and I'll just say in the world, but especially in the United States, they always have the saying, well, they have the saying, it's cliche, but it's so true. And I'm going to paraphrase it because I don't want to, you know, get banned by YouTube. If you want to hide something from black people, put it in a book. If you want to hide something from black people, you can substitute whatever words you want to use right there. Put it in a book. And the funny thing was, was the first time I heard that, I believe I was in Iraq and and of course, the dynamic in the military and things like that, especially when I was in, you'll be banned, kicked out, shipped, and canceled forever for the conversation that, you know, we have as soldiers, you know, black, white, male, female, details don't matter on that. But the conversations that we have, we have those conversations. So the first time I heard it was, you know, it was uh, one of the soldiers, he was uh, a Caucasian descent, let's just call it that. And then we just, and I was asking him, I was like, let me, I was like, just tell me, because, you know, he was from like Kentucky or something like that. And I was like, go ahead, just tell me all the jokes that, you know, you heard growing up or whatever. And he was a little uncomfortable at first, but then he realized that it was just, I wanted to hear what, you know, people said. Then he said it, the best way to hide, you know, the saying that I just said. And he didn't say the N word for people that's out there that's sensitive to the subject, but he just said it. He said, put it in a book. And then once he said it, it it was like, oh. And then, but I start thinking about it. I start thinking about it. everybody that I know, I mean, growing up in my community, aunt, uncle, none of them read anything. None of them read at all. And so after trying all those get rich quick schemes and all that, and it wasn't working, I picked up a book. That's what it was. I picked up a book. And when I picked up a book, it was a millionaire telling me their insights on how to get to where he's at. And from there, that is when it started making sense. I can't have this impoverished, poor mindset and thinking of the next flip or how to get a couple dollars in my pocket to try to flip it again like I'm a drug dealer, it's a long-term game that has to be played out. And it has to be processes and systems and discipline and different things. And being in the military, discipline is one thing that I already had. So now I just had to start putting the other processes in place. And then so I just started thinking, thinking and acting, not walking around saying, look at me, I'm a millionaire. I started acting and doing the things that this millionaire in the book was doing. 
I wasn't creating. I knew I didn't know what I was doing. I already came to that realization. I looked in the mirror and said, hey, Kirby, you don't know what the hell you're doing. So everything that you know don't even count. So I just started mimicking everything that he talked about in the book. And then lo and behold, next thing you know, I look up and then I'm at 100,000. Then I'm at 500,000. Then I'm at a million. Then I'm at two million. And then it just kept going on. But that's what it was. It wasn't a, it's understanding how millionaires think and then actioning based on that. If you just follow the blueprint, like I always say, you don't have to get to where they're at. And the person that I'm talking about is Dave Ramsey. He's worked about 700, 800 million. I'm nowhere near that. But if I get to 1% of where he's at, that's still a million times better than where I was at. So just having a mindset of a millionaire and thinking like that, that helps you a long way. Yeah, I yeah I agree with that completely. The I see the thing is like I see a lot of people that think that being a millionaire just means that you have a million dollars. You're flashy with your money. You're throwing your money around and everything. But mm -hmm. we we've seen this and we've spoken about this. People that accumulate a million dollars or more in their careers and their you know in the music industry and sports and stuff, they blow through that money. That's not thinking like a millionaire. That's landing, you know, obviously they did the work to get to the position that they were in to play in those fields, but they didn't understand how to think like a millionaire or how to think wealthy and manage that money. And that has to come beforehand. You have to know how to think that way before you can actually sustain that net worth or that kind of mentality or lifestyle of being wealthy and that's something that is definitely not taught anywhere and i think that's i think other than learning it from people that have done it that's the those are the only places you would find it is in a book and right. people don't like to read books at all in general and i know the first book that I had read that you recommended was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And that book alone, and it's so popular. I mean, it's all over social media and stuff, you know, advertisements and all that. But people think that it's a joke to begin with. Like people that have not read it, they they think that that book is just another scam. Oh, of course, he's a millionaire because you bought his book. Like, really? Like, I'm, like book sales didn't lead to him being wealthy. But... The information in that book and books like that are it, it's it's eye opening. It it teaches you a mentality that doesn't make sense initially because you it's not what we're taught growing up. And so thinking like a millionaire is thinking like the one percent. It's thinking away from the crowd where the ninety nine percent of the world thinks the way they do and that's why they're in the middle class and the poor class and you have the one percent of thinkers that think the way that they do and they run the world and one funny point I, is uh people always say because i had i had this conversation a couple of days ago with somebody is millionaires and billionaires and I brought I made this point that you had made before is the 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 more money you have, the less emotion you show or the less emotion you have. And I said, if you look at it, the millionaires and billionaires, what are they known for? They're assholes. People call them evil. I said, but they're the people that literally run everything. So you can continue to live a life where you're struggling financially every day and you can't get to live the life that you want to live. Or you can simply just look at things differently. And it's not to say that they're assholes. It's just they see things differently than people see, than the majority of the crowd see. That's my that's my take on it and my view on it. And, and what it is, is they can see through the BS. Like, the people that don't have it, they're very emotional. They, they, want, they want you to think with emotion. And it ain't got them nowhere... Nowhere, nowhere in life. But they want 
they want it. This is the funniest thing. The people with no money want to convince the people with money that they should be doing what the person with no money is doing. What sense do they make? If the game is accumulate, why would I digress to do what you're doing? And I mean, I still have it today. I still have friends and family members telling me what I should be doing. I also have friends and family members that call me and say, hey, I got this, I got this, um, I got this, I got this business idea. I got this, this quick flip. And like, I can't go places like usually, you know, I'm hanging out with you or I just go sit by myself at a bar or something. But I can't go places hanging around family and friends without having a conversation. Somebody coming up with a, hey, uh, I got this business idea. Hey, give me twenty, thirty thousand dollars to do this do that but the thing is first off they never had twenty or thirty thousand dollars in one time in the first place then they have this assumption that i believe that if i give them twenty or thirty thousand dollars that they're going to do the right thing with it when they're not even doing the right thing with their thirty forty fifty thousand dollar a year paycheck so if you had more money more money ain't gonna make you change your habits your habits are going to make you make more money but they always look at it backwards. Everybody thinking that they have an income problem. No, they have a spending problem. So with that, it's always they want you to they want you to conform to them, but they're not looking in the mirror and realizing that you're trying to get to where they're at. Business don't work in quick flips. Business work in a long grind that's that cyclical that goes up and down, but hopefully going, you know, up to the right over a long period of time. But that's the thing. Everybody think everything's a quick flip, everything, a drug deal, everything's a lottery ticket that, oh, this thing will work. That's not how business works. So 99% of the uh, quote unquote business opportunities that come across, it only takes you two minutes to be like, no. And then, of course, they think, oh, you, you, you got it. You got it. You just don't want nobody else to shine. No, I got it. And I want to keep it. And I ain't trying to lose it with you. Because unlike you, I actually do the work. Not just heard a TikTok video or seen a social media post or got some word of advice from a friend. Like flipping homes. People who never picked up a hammer in their life, who never did anything, Hey, hey, you got $50,000 so I could do this quick flip on this house? Then what? So you pay me. Do you know anything about ARV? Do you know how much it's going to cost to flip it? Have you even done an inspection? Do you even know how a hammer works? Do you know anything? Do you know the cost of capital? It's a lot of things. They know none of that. They just saw, oh, I saw a video. So people say you can buy a home and then flip it and sell it and you're good. Yeah. Again, I always say this is when you look at short videos like shorts on YouTube or Reels or all these one minute videos that you see on social media, that's just the outline of what's going on. You need to go in and study more of what they're talking about to see how that thing, how that process works. But people see short videos and think, oh, that's it. That's all I need to know. I'm good to go. But you know, the, you don't know the nuance of it at all. And I bring up, I bring up something like Alex, when you was going through the uh, rental process and you going through, you know, different types of loans that you've been through. Like most of the ones I've done, I've always had to, you know, present all the documents. So I can tell you about that all day. But is there other avenues out there that you can acquire? Yeah. But I know there is a process that you got to go through. I know what closing documents look like. I know what a contract looks like. I know what the specs look like, what appraisal look like, what insurance declarations look like. These people have no clue of none of this and just want to go out there and jump off the DPM with my money. They don't even have the fortitude to save up the money themselves to try to do it on their own and say, okay, well, at least if I lose, if I lose, I'm losing my money. Nobody else will be affected. They say, oh, well, Kirby got it. If he loses it, then it's okay. No, it's not okay. And that's 
that's something that people don't understand. The mindset of a millionaire is to preserve capital first and then grow it. Most people just think it's, oh, just take a risk and then flip it and hope, hope the best. No, that's not how it works. I think that's one that people forget too, or not even forget, but don't realize is when you're using pe other people's capital, the first people you pay back is the investors. You don't just lose right. their money and then pay yourself. And then, oh, if you make more, then they get their money back. Like you have to make sure everyone else gets paid first. But yeah, people are just completely inconsiderate of taking other people's money. And you have to, you have to be considerate of all of that if you're looking to scale the business or anything with other people's capital. But and look, for example, look at that, look at that property in Houston. That that investor took got a hundred million dollars from different people. He made it sound good. And then within a year, he burned up the whole hundred million dollars in that commercial project in Houston. So the first person you said the first people you gotta pay back the investor. No, the first person you gotta pay back is the debt, the debt. Then the investor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Then right. then whatever's left over is you. But he burned up all of the investors' money, couldn't service the debt. So then the bank got screwed. And then he's sitting there walking around looking like, oh well, I guess they lost their money. Because I guarantee you, he he didn't put a dime into that deal at all. So he just screwed over everybody else's money, but I blame him to a certain extent, but I blame all those investors who never actually questioned information or actually did the research. They just blindly trusted, thinking that this guy knew what he was talking about because everybody else was doing it. And the guy was good at acquiring capital. And that's what's happening. And that's going to happen a lot in the commercial space. And when I mean a lot, a lot, I think by 2024, it's like $1.3 billion that's coming due. I said I, I said that number wrong. I said 1.3 billion. I think it's 1.8 billion. Sorry. That come due at 2024. And that's just the debt. Forget the investors you gotta pay back. That's just debt. And these properties not cash flowing to pay back none of that. And the interest rate is going to readjust to a higher rate because they had it probably at 3% or 4%. Now it's going to go up to 9 and 10%. They won't have the cash in, the cash in refi. They won't have any of that stuff to meet the obligations of the debt service provider. And the commercial space is going down like we've talked months ago about that. That's what we're going through right now. But having that mindset of a millionaire, again, like Alex said at the beginning, it's preserving the capital, making it grow, not giving it out and hoping and wishing. Do the research first. Get your capital, do the research. 99% of it is doing the research and understanding. The 1% is doing the action. It's not, oh, let's go out there and throw some pixie dust in the air and let's see what happens. It's actually doing the research. But that's all I got, Alex, on that one. So let me say, guys, if you like the video, uh, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, share this video, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.